when I start talking about export always, I'd like to give a little bit of context on why we talk about export in the state of Minnesota. In 2023, we exported more than $25 billion of goods and another $15 billion in services, meaning it puts us in number 22 in the country as export uh, states. And with that said, the reason why we have to remember that 95% of the population is outside of the United States. And of that 95, 85% has purchasing power and we have plenty of new markets that are full of new possibilities to really expand your business in a very profitable way. So the Minnesota Trade Office was created to provide three kind of services to the companies, the small and medium companies specifically. The first one is to go to export promotion and I will just expand on that a little bit more. But just to mention, the second one was a foreign direct investment attraction, meaning when a company from outside of the United States wants to come and set up shop in the United States, Minnesota is the best place to do. And that's what we sell every day to all the companies that are wanting to come to the United States to, at the end of the day, create jobs, which is always an important part of our economy, of course. And the third one is the protocol office of the state. The protocol office of the state, I always kind of joke about it, is not only the Downtown Abbey where to put the right fork and the left, uh, uh, you know, the cutlery around your plate, but it's also on how to do business in very specific markets that may require your special attention on the culture and the way things are done. And that's where we can provide you with uh, some input. But basically, one of our main uh, daily jobs is to uh, provide assistance and guidance on how to export to a new market. It seems very natural that you would just sell abroad. Well, it is a little bit more complicated than that. When you have a product, you will need to understand if your product is even exportable, meaning is there a market for your product? The fact that it is successful in the United States doesn't mean that it is successful everywhere else. So we help you analyze really where your product could go and what will be the best market for you to start that adventure of selling abroad. Once you know that the markets are available to you, you have to understand what kind of certification you may need to get into the market. Some markets require very high standard certification, like for example, the EU is very strong on certain certifications that are very pricey and that they can take you a lot of time to navigate and understand exactly how to use. So we can help you to navigate all those different challenges that may occur when you want to get the certification. Let's say that you have a market, you have a certification. Well, then you need to understand a little bit how to bring the, the, the product into the market. That requires a whole logistical a plan that will make your adventure either fail or succeed because depending on your choices, it can be extremely pricey, it can be dicey, and you may find yourself in a very compelling situation if you don't choose a good logistical partner and a good logistical plan. Now that you have your product, your market, your certifications and your logistical plan, you need to know how you're going to sell that product abroad. It's not because it gets into the country that it just gets sold. You need to have a distribution network. You need to have some partners that help you sell your product in the right places so you match and you meet your needs in order to be successful and, again, profitable, which is the whole point. And after that, you have to understand how to get paid because it's very nice to put the product and to sell it, but if you're not going to get paid for it, it's going to be even more challenging. And things that are very natural in our markets today, in our country today, it may be a little bit more complicated in other countries. And that's why you need to understand the whole process, have a good business plan for exports, and truly analyze how you can be successful. And we can help you in all of those areas. Now, how do we help you? And what is available to you? First of all, I have a team of 10 people here at the trade office in St. Paul that are experts in doing every single one of those uh, faces that you need in your export plan. But we can literally teach you and we can go to your company and analyze what you have in hand and go with you through every single one of the, of the aspects. We can also... Uh, helping one of the phases only. Maybe you're already into a market and you just want to expand to another market that is a little bit more complicated or unknown to you. We can support you on that. We can definitely um, put you in contact with our foreign offices. The trade office has a network of 110 foreign offices that are in country that can help you really analyze one or all of the aspects of the export plan. 
And remember, some of these services and some of the projects are free of charge. We provide an amount of hours every project that are free of charge to you, so you can kind of start seeing if this is something you want to do or not. For example, I want to export socks to Japan. OK, well, we have a Japanese company that will help you. Maybe you have everything set up except the distributor or the distribution network there. We will help you to make sure that up to a certain number of hours, they're free of charge to you and you can meet with our office and literally go and ask the questions that you need and have the support in country that you need. There are some limitations, of course. We only accept two projects a year per company, but every year you can apply again to a different market or to a different product or to a different uh, part of your export plan. Another thing that we can uh, provide to you is a grant. It's called the STEP grant. The STEP grant is the State Trade Export Promotion Plan, and you can access some funds that will help you in this uh, adventure of exporting. It can help you have to be eligible, of course, having a, a company in Minnesota, being a, being a business that is working and that is set up here in Minnesota. But it has up to $7,500 matching grant, meaning whatever you spend, we give you the same amount up to $7,500 from the state. So if you spend 15,000, we will reimburse you 7,500. That is on our website, of course, and you can access those funds to really do certain parts of your export plan that may be a little bit more costly, like, for example, a translation of your website. Remember that when you want to sell somewhere else, it's very common to do it in English and most of the countries, you know, they speak English, but they really appreciate when you translate the website in their own language. And so that can be very costly, as you know, just to translate just the website, documents, your leaflets, Everything you need to be successful in that country can be translated and therefore that will be some of the things that we can help you is a participation in a trade mission is exhibiting at a trade show. So if you want to be in a trade show, as you know, it's very expensive and pricey, but at the same time, if you can, you know, pay back some of that money with and you can be reimbursed for some of that money with the step grant, it is always it always helps in where you're going for uh, for your business. It can be a development of any kind of material that is related to your export um, uh, plan or a goalkeeper service. Sometimes you want to go to the embassy of the United States in other countries that they provide certain services called goalkeeper that help you find a distributor too. And that is that has a price attached, so we can help you with that too. And the step grant will cover half of those costs or any kind of specific activities or the certification that I was talking about. We can also help you at least remit some of those um, costs. And uh, we're here to listen to you. If there is something specific that you need that maybe I haven't mentioned right now, but this in your plan and you need it in order to be successful, just contact us. If it's not us, it will be one of our foreign offices or it will be one of our partners that would always help you navigate this tremendous and daily adventure that we have, which is the export of uh, products and services. Any questions until now? Uh, yes, uh, Gabrielle, we have a question. Uh, does the trade office help identify distributors in other countries? Yes, we do. Actually, that is one of the projects that we partner with our foreign offices because they are in country. And even though we have a wide network of friends and, and, and partners, we like to work with our consultants in the country. And, uh, and definitely that is one of the most required services we get, especially when, you, when you're dealing with a country where you don't speak the language or you don't know too much about the con culture or is very far away. It's easier for a Minnesotan to do, you know, to find a distributor in Canada than it will be to find it in Chile or to find it in uh, Vietnam, right? Uh, there are so many different aspects of the culture that will help you if you're dealing with someone in country. And they are contractors of the state, so they have gone through a very specific uh, vetting process to understand that they're helping companies to succeed, like always. So yes, that's one of the services that we provide constantly, and it's been very successful. We have had great success stories on companies that have been able to, you know, to navigate uh, the difficulties of another country. Okay, thank you, Gabrielle. We do have another question. Uh, do you help us to understand GST slash VAT, the, the VAT tax, uh, yes. et cetera? Yes, actually we have 
few representatives in uh, in Europe for the VAT specifically. And uh, yes, it depends on the question. As you know, each country is different. In the EU, the VAT is kind of common. But if you move now to the UK, I'm sure that there will be some differences just because of Brexit and uh, all the challenges they're going through. But definitely, it's just a matter of what do you really need? If we can answer ourselves, we will. If not, we will connect you with our offices. We will always be present in the in the in the conference calls just because we want to make sure that we're monitoring the level of service that you're getting and uh and the efficiency of the response you're getting and if it's exactly what you needed so definitely if that is something it's a little bit broad how do we understand that well it's just a tax yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tax that is applied but maybe is when is it applied can we get it somehow how is the recoup of that uh, uh, VAT in this case, you know, there are ways of recouping that money if you're doing business in a, in, a, in a very specific way. So those are questions that definitely we can answer. It's just a matter of sending me an email and I will pass it on to the right person and we will follow up for sure. Fantastic. Thank you. We are getting other questions. Another question is, how does the trade office work to help with banking and currency exchange? Ah, well, the currency exchange is something that is set up by federal government, so we cannot help with the currency exchange. It is what it is per day. The banking, I would have to know a little bit more about the banking. Is it a banking of um, a company that is trying to set up shop or set up a bank account abroad? And if that is the question, it will depend on the country. Can we help you? We can give you the guidance. What we cannot do is to encourage you to do business with one bank, for example. That is not what we do because we will have to vet every single bank to ensure that the bank is uh, appropriate. However, in the main financial institutions, uh, if you're doing business here with a U, I cannot say a bank either, but if you're doing you know, business with a specific sure. bank, they will have a partnership with normally a bank, let's say UK, EU, Canada, Mexico, et cetera. So normally I will encourage always use the, the partnership that you have in the bank. If it is to find a new bank, I am sure that through the partners, they will at least be able to um, not to not to give you not to give precedence to one bank over another, but at least to tell you which one may have troubles in the country mm -hmm. or not. If there is a bank that is involved in a huge scandal, well, they will flag it for you. I'm not sure we can you know, promote one bank over another. The state is very clear on that. That's why we don't promote one partner over another either. If you go to our website, you can see a list of uh, companies that do logistics, uh, companies that do certifications, because we cannot benefit one over another. It's up to you to choose the partner you want to choose. But we can always help you navigate if you're going to, I don't know, South Africa, for example. Is there a bank that is related to the United States or that has partnerships with a bank in the United States? That's what we can do. And as for exchange, so I'm not sure if we can help you with those two things, but we can guide you at least on how to find the best partner. Oh, more than fair. I, I, I think that's that's excellent information. Another question we have, uh, we've been selling in Europe and Canada through Amazon. Would you have better avenues for us? Ah, well, Amazon is quite strong. I use Amazon almost every day, I think. So I don't know if there is a stronger <laughs> Amazon avenue. Um, it all depends on your volume and it all depends on your market and the product. Again, uh, sure. maybe if you send me an email on the side, we can. But if you're successful and you have the volume to be selling through Amazon, um, I am sure you're asking the question because you're getting um, maybe some fees that you would like to avoid in the future. However, it provides you the distribution system. So depending on your product, if your product is strong enough and is needed enough and it has um, uh, it has literally customers in those countries. Maybe there are other distribution networks that they are, but we will have to analyze the shipping portion of it too. If you are with Amazon, and I'm not very familiar with Amazon because it's too big for us, we help small and medium companies, but just by logic and by understanding a little bit of the sales operations world, you know, I'm sure they will provide with specific uh, shipping uh, benefits or they Amazon will provide you with at the same time some specific fees or some specific standards that you have to meet. So if what you're trying to get is away from that, maybe you should go on your own. 
but that also brings more cost in certain things. So it will be an analysis on what the product is, where are you trying to go, what are your financial needs and your financial goals and your export goals, so we can see if another option could be beneficial to you. Because a lot of times you say, oh my goodness, I'm paying all these fees for this. Yeah, but they bring it to your home on 24 i mean the prime you know thing <laughs> yes. 24 hours 48 hours so there are benefits that maybe are not immediate to you but to the customers they are so it would be more of an analysis case but uh are there other avenues than amazon oh yes i mean not everybody sells through amazon so there is another market than amazon Correct. but it will depend on on a lot of specifics from your product and your company okay Great. I think connected to that, I had Mr. Sam Warning send me an email, and he threw the uh, same question in in the chat. Um, Gabrielle, while you were speaking, I already forwarded that to you. It basically has to do with um, shipping products out, manufacturing there, and bringing it back. So um, that's probably a more specific question that that I, like I said, I, I forwarded to you. So um, just to keep you aware of that. Uh, we do have another question from a person. Uh, can you talk a little bit more about the step grant and the reimbursement? If the total expenses are less than $7,500, is the full amount covered? No, it's matching at all times. We believe that um, we give you some, you give some. And that's kind of, I don't know, it feels fair. So if you really want to invest, we're not supposed to be uh, the, the financial piece of the export, but we can help. The idea is to have a little help so you can see the benefit of exporting and you can apply every year. So, you know, if you're having a translation of the website, as I was saying before, and it costs you $4,000, we will get, we will give you, we, re, we will reimburse you $2,000. And that is because you should have some skin in the game too. And that's, we don't have more funds mm -hmm. actually, but you can apply once every year. And the way it works is that you fill an application. We make sure that what you're trying to spend the money on is inside of the eligibility. You know, there are sometimes uh, some costs that are not eligible. There are a few of them, but we just want to make sure that we're all in the same page from the beginning. So there are no surprises. Meaning if you made the expense, suddenly we cannot reimburse you. That wouldn't be fair either. So we want to make sure that we're all in the same page from the beginning. Once you make the expense, you have your uh, invoices. You request reimbursement when those initiatives and activities are done. And then you get the, the check and the reimbursement in the next uh, four to six weeks, I think it is. The max we have proposed is six weeks. Normally it gets much faster. And if it's not, it was just because our dear administrator was on vacation one week, but normally should be pretty fast once we have all the documentation and the reimbursement requests done. Okay, thank you. Uh, Gabrielle, I want to let you know that I put in a link to the International Trade Administration, um, learn how to export, and I'm surprised we haven't had a question yet. Can you help me import goods into Minnesota? Okay, that's a great question, and I get it quite a bit. <laughs> we will help you. We will help you with the process, even though we're supposed to be export promotion. But I truly believe that is trade and trade is import and export. So it all depends on what you're trying to do. You know, there are some imports that require um, a lot of different pieces of, but definitely we will consider it. And that brings me to the point that remember we have an FTZ, the foreign trade zones in Minnesota. That is something that some people do not understand very well. And maybe we should have the expert in another call to talk about the benefits because that is purely import. And it's one of these huge benefits for um, for for the companies when they're trying to import in a bigger scale than just a small import. If you're just looking for information, connections and such, definitely call us because if we don't know the answer, we will send you to the right person that can answer the question and can guide right. you through it. Perfect. All right, we have another question. Is there a direct contact for help with us shipping large cargo overseas? We are looking to start shipping several hundred tons of product to an overseas market. But we have never shipped the cargo before. There are many regulations and rules that can require us to provide some uh, more information than what we're used to. Can you help us with that? Yes, we can help you with that. Okay. There are, yep. Uh, normally the main document, 
the main documentation that you always need is the certificate of free sale, for example. It's a document okay. that not many people understand, but we do it here at the trade office. It's just a paper that customs uh, abroad require just to say that this is a product that has been sold oh, Joe in Gale, Minnesota you before. Well, we have another person yeah. that is coming into the call too. That's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> if they could mute themselves, that would be great. But yes, definitely if yeah. you're requiring, yeah. um, you know, more certifications and more mm -hmm. documents for uh, Sorry, Gabrielle, it uh, looks like you are on mute. The last couple of sentences, I know. <laughs> okay, somebody muted me then. <laughs> we are there you go. Not me this time. Yes. So I was saying that uh, one of those documents is the certificate of free sale that is provided by the Minnesota Trade Office. We do thousands a year, literally, and uh, and it's just a, a sealed document saying that your product is already being sold in the United States, meaning you're not making up a product out of the blue and just shipping it somewhere else, but it's sold here, and that is true, you're a company, and, and that is one of the always required documents for most of, of the companies. We do it from 3M to the smallest company you can imagine. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, someone from the chamber put in um, a link to their uh, their guide to exporting. So that's a, a great link. Please look in the chat for that. Um, and if Kate Grady is available, um, put in a question. Hi, can you email today information? I'm not I'm not sure which part of the information, Kate, if you want to want to hop hop in and, and tell us what you would like today. We can try. Okay, um, well, we're waiting for that. Another question here is, I have a client that is looking for assistance with importing at relatively small scale. What is the best way to connect them to the trade office for assistance? Email us. Yes, can you hear me? Sorry. Uh, okay, so now, I, is this I Kate? Was just wondering, yes, this is Kate. Yes, I was just wondering if the information re related to the, like the, the brand and, and also what, you will get reimbursed if that information could be shared. Because I, I kind of came in and I missed some of the, like the beginning of that conversation. That's kind of what I was wondering. Yes. Sure. Uh, yep. Well, I, I would say that if you go out to the Minnesota Trade Office site, and then the, the step grant information is right there. Correct, Gabrielle? Okay. Yes, it is. Yeah. And if not, just send me an email. And I will send it, I mean, either I respond or I will send it to one of my team to respond to you as soon as possible. Thank you. There is sure. a very so, clear list of the services mm -hmm. that we provide. And if you have a doubt on one service that you want to provide and is not in the list, just give us a call or just send us an email. We will definitely, uh, and I see that one of my team is online too, is Rachel Limon, and she just <laughs> put something in the chat. So definitely you can contact Rachel or I, and we will make sure that you get the full information. But it's kind of a very specific list for eligibility that is kind of very logical. There is nothing out, outstanding. But if you have a doubt, and you don't know if one of your services that you want to be reimbursed for or, you know, a, a bill that you want to be, an invoice you want to be reimbursed, you don't know, just give us a call and we can tell you almost immediately. Perfect. Great. Rachel, thank you. She is dropping in the information on the step grants, <laughs> where to get it. Um, I told you we, we have a great team. <laughs> yes, you do. I've I worked with it with a number of the, the trade reps and they are fantastic. Um, people have been asking for your email address. They can either drop it to me or to you. It's basically first name dot last name at state dot mn dot us. So probably easier just to do my name, Mark dot Simmer at state dot mn dot us, and I will get that information to to the right people. Um, we also have a link. It looks like in the chat, uh, Maribel. Thank you, Maribel, uh, from the SBA SBA uh, Export Products U.S. Small Business Administration. So there's a link for for information there. There is a uh, preponderance of information, how to export things, how to import things. Um, probably, and maybe I, I saw the question and didn't go. Uh, can Gabrielle, can the trade office help line up uh, brokers and, and connect with brokers when, when exporting goods? Brokers, you mean logistical brokers like a yes. stick yeah. ship company, a stick yeah. ship lane? That, that we get into, okay. So to your question, yes, we can. However, there are many. 
and we cannot yes, choose yes. one over the other. Yeah. So that, yes. that's the problem we get. It's not that we don't know that certain companies do the whole full service from picking up your merchandise uh, with your container sure. in your patio to shipping it to Antwerp. They can do the whole thing. There are many actually in Minnesota and they're all in our directory. Um, now it's up to you to find which one has a better price, which one, because what you're going to find yep. in brokerage and logistic companies is you're gonna, always going to pay for time and space. That's kind of also in the logical space, right? If you want it very fast and very quick, uh, it's going to be more expensive than if you don't mind taking two months to get to Chile. Yeah. So uh, the, the difference is what do you need and what kind of product do you have? I mean, if it's a product that really doesn't matter and you have been supplying it properly and you have a good plan and you don't care too much about time, there are companies that will provide you a better pricing, which at the end of the day, once you look into your containers, if is the container solution you're looking for, it really makes it. That's what I was talking about, your logistical plan. Yep. That's going to make a difference on your profitability at every single shipment. Uh, so at the end of the day, what kind of insurance do you want to get? What kind of inco terms do you have to use? I mean, all those things are things that depending on product, geography, volume, yes. and time, they're going to impact your cost. So can we give you a broker? Yes, we can. Should we give you a broker? No, we shouldn't. You should choose your own partner yes. because it's going to be the one that is going to provide you with the best solution depending on your needs. Sorry, it's not yeah. that I don't want to commit. It's just that oh, it's no. difficult to give one, you know, one company over another because all Minnesota companies, you know, have the right to do their business and we shouldn't be sure. benefiting one. Yeah, I mean, I, I can tell you from my experience, we have people that that call us and want to know all the, the licensing requirements for exporting. What are, what are the state licenses? And basically... What what I end up telling people is, for the most part, there is no there's no license requirement to to export goods. You certainly probably will need to work with a with a broker because they are they're vetted. They're they're in the system to be brokers. Um, depend and exactly that depending on on what you're trying to ship. There are um, there are different ways to to do it in space, but but that's really a a question. And would would you agree with that, Gabrielle? That for most products exporting from Minnesota there's there's no license from the state it's it's federally regulated for for the most part correct correct and that's the difference also between the brokers and your plan so if you have enough volume and you're really into the exporting world uh, a lot of companies will provide will prefer to have one person one full-time employee that just does the export because that person can do all the paperwork in-house and that's kind of a saving right? So you truly do everything in-house. You find out everything you need. They are the ones that sometimes they talk to us and they ask, hey, we're trying to export to a new country. Uh, you know, I'm not familiar. What can you help us with and what do I need? So all these things, some companies, they're at a volume that they need their own person. But others, either it's just two shipments a year and they just do it through a broker that they just provide, the company provides the product and then they just wait for the money kind of come, to come in because they pay for everything else. The logistics, the paperwork, the certification, everything they may need. All the letters that some markets required or the different documents that, you know, depending on the market you're going, you're required to provide. But to your point, from the state, no. We accept the certificate of free sale, which is the only thing that most of the times yep. is needed. But that's kind of automatic. Is not that doesn't take too long, and you don't have to provide an amount of information. It's just where you're exporting and who are you and who are you. That's it. Absolutely great. We had a question come in, and I believe Rachel is answering that. It's uh, the cargo question. So, if other people have uh, questions uh, about about exporting from Minnesota, please drop them in the chat, or we can take just a second here if you want to. Raise your hand or turn your mic on, um, and we can certainly answer those. And since it's such a nice day, my my patience level for waiting <laughs> <laughs> is is low. Um, and and we and we really want to make this a a conversation. It it doesn't need to be dragged out. We are just trying to provide that information. And Gabrielle has done an excellent job doing that. And and Rachel, um, we have no other trade questions. Um, a couple of things that I was uh, going to bring up in the meeting: um, if Twilight is available, 
uh, from the uh, SBA. The EIDL program is back in business for businesses who are suffering uh, economic loss due to the uh, unseasonably warm weather. So I was going to ask Twyla if she could mention about the the uh, the EIDL program access. <laughs> Maybe. Twyla actually retired recently. Whoa, okay. I just saw her name pop up. Okay. Hi, Mark. Mark, this is Mary Bell. I'm actually representing the SBA today. I'm here. Oh, great, Mary Bell. Yes. Yes, yeah, so we do have an idle economic injury disaster loan for 81 counties in the state of Minnesota. This is a loan that people can apply directly through the SBA. I can give you um, the portal where people can go in. You have to sign up and then you can search for your, the state and the county. If your county is one of those 81 counties, you can go ahead and apply for the idle loan up to $2 million. And this yep. is for working capital. So working capital should cover all those bills that the business couldn't fulfill because of the disaster, right? Not getting enough snow. So it's not for loss sales. And you also will not specify the amount that you need to borrow on the application. SBA will look at your paperwork, how much sales you brought in, you know, your working capital. They will calculate that mm -hmm. and, and throw you an amount that you can uh, agree to borrow or you can just turn it down. OK, thank you, Maribel. Um, and I have on a the question. Chat, okay. mm -hmm. I'm going to put the link on the chat where you can find more information. Great, thank you. Uh, I had a question come in to me, but I believe since we share the first three letters of our names, I'm going to give it to you. Uh, have there been any new small business lending programs for this year through the SBA? New, I will say not new ones, um, but our programs have changed. They are easier to obtain. We're working with the uh, lenders in a faster pace. Um, we have the 7A small loans for loans of uh, $500,000 or less. Um, SBA usually charges a guarantee fee for loans and that guarantee fee gets passed to the lender and, and the lender passes it to the borrower. And if you get a small loan of $500,000 uh, or less, you don't have to pay that guarantee fee. So there have been changes. You know, the, the application, it's easier to fill out. It's gonna be uh, user user friendly for the borrower to understand. So, but a new program, uh, we don't have anything new. Okay. And then, Maribel, I was looking at it today. Is it still undetermined whether those are going to be uh, loans that you have to repay? The idle? Will... Yes. Yeah. It's a loan. It's a loan that you have to repay with okay. a very small interest fee, very small uh, monthly fee because it's a long term loan. It's, you know, the terms are very long, um, but it okay. is it is a loan. Good. Thank you. Um, just with with that loan sharing the the same name as the as the COVID nineteen, uh, people should go to the site, look at all the the new information that is that is uh, available there. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah. What else did I have uh, thinking for today? Um, my boss and I, Charles Schaefer, who's on the meeting, he's just listening in. Uh, we're discussing about a court case that came up. Um, in Alabama, uh, had to do with the beneficial ownership information, um, and just to just to boil it down, people, most businesses still need to file the beneficial ownership information. That's a, a, re, a requirement through the uh, U.S. Treasury Department. Um, the court case that uh, affected a couple groups, at least currently, is not affecting all the rest of the small uh, businesses and large businesses in, in, in the US. There is information, let me just throw the website back out again. It's uh, through FinCEN and I will just throw that in here. Um, but that was a development that may have affected more people than we had thought, uh, but it's a, it was a, a narrow uh, court ruling on that. Um, and then other things. So, how about that weather? It's been pretty. It's been pretty nice. Um, if people have some some topics or some questions that they haven't had a chance to ask, please uh, throw it in the chat or um, turn your mic on, and we'd be glad to uh, to answer those.
while I'm looking here. Hey, Mark, um, yep. Rob Simperman here uh, for uh, Launch Minnesota. Just wanted to throw one yes. thing in the chat um, as long as we've got a, a minute. Um, as many of you know, we're, we're always working to uh, yeah, elevate and improve the uh, ecosystem for entrepreneurs in the state. Uh, in doing that, we're trying to uh, do a little bit of benchmarking and get some research, get some voice of of our clients and customers around the state. So I'm going to drop a, a survey link into the chat. If, oh, great. Uh, anybody could uh, spend a few minutes today. It's pretty straightforward. It'll only take five, ten minutes, and you can give us an assessment as to where we should allocate kind of our time and effort to to try to make the whole thing better for everybody. All right. Thanks, Rob. Um, Thank you. Connected with, yeah, connected with that, I threw in uh, earlier a link to the um, Join Us Minnesota. It's a it's a calendar of upcoming events. A couple of questions that are coming in here. Are there any grants available for starting a new small business? Uh, my answer has been from the uh, Department of Employment and Economic Development. There is a grant program coming online later this spring called the Promise Act Grant Program. And that is available on our website and our, and our business funding. I will grab a link for that for their, our business funding programs and I will throw it in there. Um, I do not know of any other um, uh, small business grants. If anyone else has information on that in, in the meeting, please share it. Hey, Greg. Yeah. This is uh, Greg with InstaTrim Products. Um, yeah. We're a 10 year old company. Two three million dollars a year. We're always looking for working capital funding to grow our business. We're in a major growth spurt and really struggle getting anything out of the banks these days. Is there a specific program you're aware of that we could apply to for that? Um, not necessarily a specific. I'll throw in the the link for the um, for the uh, the state. We have lots of uh, answers here. Um, there's a, a number of programs. One is the state small business credit. Um, let me just grab the name Initiative. down here. <laughs> Initiative. Yep. Yeah, that's that encompasses uh, a few different programs, but the link for the uh, the current state programs are all here. Uh, certainly, we have different uh, business development reps around the state that we can you can email me and I can put you back out in touch with those those folks and we they can help you in your area look look for that funding it is certainly a, a I, that is the the question where where to find money um and maribel would probably agree with this i mean the the sba guarantee uh program is probably the the biggest pool uh you know right right now for for most businesses that's good Thank correct you, um we have different type of loans. 7A, it's the most popular loan, depending how you use it. There's a, a different uh, program with the 7A. We have the Express, we have the small 7A. Um, and then we have, you know, they talked about in, um, exporting. We do have international um, capital, working capital loans, export loans, and then the 504 loans for people that want to purchase buildings, equipments, big assets, a 504 loan might be best. And these loans are for people in business or, or just starting, planning to start a business. They need that capital. When it comes to grants, um, we don't have grants. There is a federal federal website where the federal government lists all the grants. It's grants.gov. Um, and these grants yeah, are usually yeah. for uh, companies that are up and running and they have something that will really help the community. Okay, so there's uh, they offer trainings it's really going to help the community maybe they came up with a covid a new covid vaccine you know they might be a grant for them so sure. it's not for startups sure. it's not for running the business uh, again for federal uh, grants congress has to approve that money and and it's this is tax money they're very careful thank you sure uh do we have any other questions mark did you want me to share anything on ssbci since you brought it up well, Drew, welcome. <laughs> yes, absolutely, please. 
Um, so we have, there's six programs under the State Small Business Credit Initiative umbrella. Three of them are really focused on the startup area. Two of those are venture capital programs. There's a direct program and a fund program. Those are both being managed by the University of Minnesota's Office of Investments and Banking, and you can con connect with them directly. Um, if you're looking for that, that is all dilutive funding. Um, the other one that's for startups that's running through DEED um, is called the Growth Loan Fund, which is uh, long-term patient loans for companies that are doing equity raises. Uh, most of the time, those are the same companies that would qualify for the angel tax credit. Um, we have a program that is a companion lending program that we partner with banks on uh, for the manufacturing sector for companies that are investing in automation equipment. Um, and then we have two other programs that partner with external lenders, both banks and community development, financial institutions, and other nonprofit lenders. There is a guarantee program that's a little bit of a supplement for uh, businesses that don't quite fit into the 7A program that uh, Maribel was discussing, and then um, a participation program that is partnering with uh, CDFIs that are frequently working with businesses that have uh, more limited access to credit than, than traditional banks can provide. Great. Thank you, Drew. Always there to help out. Uh, we have a question here, and I will try and do my best. Uh, can the replay and links be sent to our emails? Um, I already added the link uh, even before the meeting started. Um, uh, as far as where the meeting recordings are, I'm going to throw it um, in here. Um, as I'm doing that, I have a question where where's the information on these uh, six programs? The information um, is in our links. I will grab it one more time for the Minnesota Deed Business uh, Financing Program. So that is really where the uh, the the information. I, I think Drew, you you would probably agree it hasn't changed a lot. It's it is available through the Deed website under uh, Business Financing Programs. Um, so we have it there. I'll just grab that link one more time as I read this question. Um, if you have not applied for a PPP loan, I need to close that out. Uh, let's see. There we go. If you've not applied for a PPP loan forgiveness, please join us. So there we go for the SBA Great Lakes region. That is great. Um, and then one more time, I will put in the, the link for the uh, SSBCI programs. Uh, and then one more time, do we have any other questions on on anything that, that we've discussed or, or anything coming up? Andy from the SBDCs, anything new uh, with the SBDCs? No, you covered it um, in full. The biggest thing was the EIDL program that was mentioned by Mirabel. I know that is yeah. something that's new that many of you are familiar with. So certainly if you do have questions, the SBA is a great resource, but also our local SBC offices are a resource as well. As we all know, things change quite a bit, so there's always new information that's coming out. All right. Thank you very much. And with that, if we have no other questions, I would be glad to say bye to everybody. Uh, we, we certainly have um, good interaction on these calls. We try and provide uh, a lot of information. And as I'm scurrying around trying to find a few things, we have meetings coming up. Let's see here. Let me just see if I can grab the next two topics quick. And let's see. For the next two topics, if this pops open, uh, April uh, workforce issues, that's prevented by our workforce strategy team with Indeed. And then in May, uh, there are some new rules being implemented uh, that will impact small businesses regarding uh, uh, pollution control. And the Minnesota Pollution Control will have a representative on to, uh, to speak with us about that. Um, I've got one last question here. Um, I want to introduce government sales in a not scurry way to ownership. Is there anywhere I can get some info? Introduce government sales. Hmm. I'm not exactly sure what the question is. Dominic, if you want to hop on and and give me a, a little bit more information, I, I can certainly help you with that. Just give him just a second. There here. we go. Okay. Right. Can you hear me okay? Sure. 
All right. So I was wondering in regards to um, trying to provide some more information to our ownership team in regards to kind of initiating some uh, sales possibly in the government sector. And I'm not quite sure where to get some good information as to how to get started for them. I'd like to be able to give them something that they could bring to the table and take a look at, kind of get prepared with. Sure. Um my standard answer, and they are a great group of people, it's Apex Accelerators. They work with the uh, Minnesota Department of Administration, and I'm just trying to get their, their local site here. Um, they basically will provide information on how to be a vendor to uh, the federal government and the state of Minnesota. So I'm just looking for their information here. Uh, as some people know, they were formerly called PTAC, but Apex is a great, great resource. They will help you learn the uh, the language of dealing with um, many different uh, acronyms for, for different agencies. But Apex Accelerator, I've worked a couple of events with them, and they are the ones that um, will uh, – Tell you how to how to do that. What what is the state looking for? What is the federal government yeah. looking for? And in addition, for. yeah. And in addition with that, um, the last event I went to and worked with them, there is another group called CERT, which is Hennepin County, Ramsey County, St. Paul, and Minneapolis. Those units of government have combined their purchasing. So CERT basically will say if you've gone through the Department of Administration, they have the Office of Equity and in procurement um, and if apex helps people get into that if you're good with the state you're good with us so there are lots of resources for for dealing with different units of government um, so cert brings those four local agencies together apex will help you learn the federal language and the and the state language so yeah they are they're great um thank you that's sure. very helpful actually i did not know that uh, apex accelerators was uh part of PTAC. I used to use PTAC for all of the yep. training and information. I did not know that they switched <laughs> names. That's why they were gone. Yep. All right. About, well, about, thank about, you. Yeah, about two years ago. And I, I cannot okay. promote them enough. The events we've gone to, and I, I use this with a with a person I was speaking to today. In, in my office, we answer everything. If we don't have an answer for you, we will find you a resource to get you what you need. Um, like an instance of person was asking in this chat about, hey, you know, Drew said about this program, you know, where can we find this? I point him to Drew. Drew already put a link in for the SSBCI page. Um, so I, I appreciate that. And Apex kind of works on, on the same manner. If someone says, I'm already a vendor to the state or the federal government, or I'm just thinking about it, they are um, totally uh, open to come come in to, to us and, and we will help you do that. Uh, the Kind of the analogy I use today is um, with a with a person is that it, it's it's a little different. It, the state and federal government want are trying to get more people to be vendors with them so they can expand that pool for more opportunities for people. So they are doing a outreach program, and uh, Apex Accelerator is a is a big part of that. They are saying we have we have money. We want to buy your products or services. Come come here. We'll we'll help you figure out how to how to get into into these two different kind of um you know work areas but they are they are great they are a hundred percent into helping people and that's really good i think they've got a staff of uh eight or nine so anybody that's very please. helpful thank you good okay and we're at 251 uh the sunshine is is <laughs> is bright outside if there's no other questions we will end the meeting everybody Clark. uh yep. oh yes maribel yes maribel so Sadbox, it's having an event. This is um, Apex. It's it's participating. So anybody that wants to know about government contracting, SBA program, state, federal, um, there's a, a an event uh, that Sadbox has put on, and I'm going to put the link so that people can register. It's free. It's all day. They have trainings, one on one. They're gonna have matchmaking where you can talk to a, a contracting great, officer that can buy your products and services. So I'll I'll put the link. It's a very good event. SBA will be there. Good, good. And 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 then and then I will I also will promote, also promote uh, uh, Maribel. 
We have worked some, some events together with the U.S. Department of Labor and Industry, with other units of state government. We are trying to get the word out there. There is a lot of assistance for people. Almost all of it is free or or no cost. We, This is what we we do. We, we enjoy it. We want to get this information to people um, to uh, to be very very happy with, with, with starting a business and, 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 and growing a business. So uh, I'll just give Maribel just a second if she wants to throw that link in there. And again, the meeting is uh, recorded. Uh, somebody, namely me, started the meeting recording a little late today, but it, will, it should be available and thrown up on our website within a day or two. And I will make an effort to... Um, Try and create something or I, I, the, the reason why I'm just pausing is um, I know that the, the email list uh, that our communications unit uses to send this meeting invite out goes to about 76,000 people. So I'm not I'm not sure if I if I if I want to create another another broadcast email for people. Um, but the, the links will will be in the chat for right here. Um, and just simply, if there's things that, that we covered and you need to know that information, you can email me directly, mark.simmer at state.mn.us, and I will get you the correct um, uh, contact person and the, and the, the, the links. Th that way, it kind of keeps the information for the people who really need it a, a little more focused than blasting out another message. And with that, um, I think that's all I have for today. So everybody, thank you, Gabrielle. Thank you for coming. Everybody else who came today, thanks. I appreciate it. All right. Bye.